big crowd on hand tonight here in the stadium, and they are quite obviously excited about this international competition. That's as loud as the stadium crowd has been in several weeks. Arthur Irbay gets the start. He is a 21-year-old goaltender, five foot seven, 179 pounds. Now back of the goal, shooting off, put it to the far side. Zanarok able to clear it to center. And it bounces up into the air there. Put it to the line where Manson had to shoot it to the corner. Ryan Newton works along the board. Got it to Conroy, the long shot. He scores! Cher and Cher alike. He's going to use four units of five with the limitations of NHL rules. You have to block off the middle of the ice at all times against them. Now as they come over the line, the play is offside. A big hit against Skozarev, delivered, delivered by McGill, but the whistle had stopped the action. Excellent penalty killing by the Blackhawks. has shown great improvement in the last two or three weeks, but they've been aggressive up the middle, all through the ice. You have to be having someone right in the middle. Sure enough, we'll get the holding penalty on Stapleton, and that's a name that's dear to my heart. Smirnoff? <laughs> no, Alexander. <laughs> Probably pretty dear to your liver, too, I'd imagine. <laughs> now works it over the line on a pick play as Semenov was rubbed off by Santa Paz. Then Yanni hammered in the corner. Then Santa Paz dug it out. Flipped it in front. Here's a shot. Here, baby. Big save on Yanni. Rebound back of the net. Tough to intimidate the Soviet team. Very physical when called upon, and some of them more so than others, just as it is over here. They're very physical when called upon. Penalty is over now. Both teams back at full strength as the Hawks dump it in. Back of that big hit by Eagles, knocking down Durden. Shooting off back. Looking to clear it, then Larmer held it in as Chubinov was run over by Mackey. Now here's a long shot blocked at the defense. Rebound to the far side. I said Mackey was Creighton, actually, that had words with Chudnov. And now right Chudnov just spit at him, I think. Chudnov, as the puck went in, the crowd just appeared to spit at Adam Creighton. Well, they haven't changed much in that department since 1972. He used to jab you in the back of the leg where he had no protection in the back of the knee, kick you in the back of the calf with their skates, and also spit at you whenever you take a good run or hit at him. Creighton flattened shoot enough in the corner after Manson let the shot go. And then as the whistle blew, shoot enough, spit right at Creighton. Now these guys don't have the best breath in the world either. Santa pass out there between Larmer and Thomas. Now here's the draw to Manson. A drive right on here, baby. Rebound, a shot, and they score! Here they got a piece of Larmer's rebound, but it trickled in behind him. Into the corner, got help from Stapleton. Chudinov stepped into him. Now, puck came free to Chudinov. Rolled it over to the far side. Hawks able to hold. Rushed by two Soviet players. Seemingly out there the entire night. Here's Hates over the line. And he is knocked off the play as Manson took a run at him. You said it, they get away with one, but here's a Manson hit on Hates. Hates trying to make a move, and Manson didn't go for it. Just about got all of Hates. And... Shot it out to center ice, and Brown just ran over a man there. Now five seconds for the period. Kremenov trying to center it. Belfort picked it off, holds it. One second left to go. Hawks have been very physical, but they've been controlled. They haven't taken a lot of unnecessary runs at the Russians. It's very easy to do when you play them once. You get very emotional and talking about communism and democracy, and sometimes that you get running around, get a little too emotional and get carried away with the stick and the physical part of the game and you forget about the real agenda here and that's winning the game. 
Tell me about the way the Soviet youth learned to play hockey. Well, up until they're 13 years old, they don't keep any statistics on wins, losses, goals, or assists. They just play the game. They teach them the fundamentals, and uh, there's no statistics involved. There are no statistics involved. Something that maybe some Little League people in hockey should maybe take into consideration. Boy, a point well taken and well made. Well, the systems may be vastly different, I think. You can learn from both. That's exactly right. Culturally, culturally, there are some things that we can learn from the Soviets and vice versa. And that could be one. That's what a great idea. And how many problems would be saved if the youth in any sport just no, learn no to enjoy out, the game. One. Yeah, no burnout. Learn to enjoy the game. Learn the fundamentals. And there's plenty of time for the games to count as your life goes along. Why pressure a kid when he's 10 years old and 12 years old. Rolling it out to center ice. Now, Vito Lynch run over by Stapleton, and they have a little battle along the board, but the play continues. Cassidy takes a roughing penalty. He took the body and then was pushed from behind. And then got the glove up, and Marowelli calls a roughing penalty on Cassidy at 8.58. Riga get their third power play. Elian into the deep slot. Now a long wrist shot, hit somebody in front, and it's underneath a fallen McGill, and the whistle sounds, and again, Soviets having to utilize the point men. Now, Conroy over the line. Turned around, trying to top it, did to Staple, and he shoots, and a save by Reirbeg, and Basson tried to redirect it into the corner it goes. Now Eagles looking to jam it out of there, and the Soviets are able to cover it up. Now Dinamo Riga with Semenov stepping into the hog zone for Yashin, to Lomak and around Masson right in. Controls the whistle sound. The Russians of the power play, they trail two to one on Sports Vision and BBS. Now, oh, Varianov trying to clear it. He's hammered by Manson as he dumped it into the hawk zone. And Steve Thomas on the left wing board, lifting it into the Soviet zone. Hammered around the boards by Zanoyev. Yoni held it in. Oh, and elbowing. Paul should have been made on Presley. He just hammered Believsky but got away with one. And here comes Alexander Believsky to the line. And he's knocked down there by Brown. And out comes Thomas. Steve Thomas into the Russian zone. He's separated from the puck aggressively by Zanoyev. To Lomachin rolling it ahead. Yashin dropped it to the line. Lomachin. Lomachin into the near circle. Now still hanging. Rolled it to the deep slot. Here's shooting off a shot. And a save. Rebound. Belfort covers it up with some heavy battling going on in the slot in front of Ed Belfort. Now Thomas. He rolled it to the side of the net, but here base swats it away. Held in by McGill. A long drive. Tip and a save. Rebound. And score! And a break. Cleared to 
right center ice. Low market. Defenseman Alexander Smirnov appeared to take Dan Marowelli and flip him. And meanwhile, Lamakin was just run over by McGill right at the Hawk bench by the glass partition just inside the Hawk blue line. Lamakin with tremendous stick handling ability, but McGill played the body perfectly and then hammered him into the Chicago net. Meanwhile, Smirnov offended Marowelli. And Smirnov sent off. Well, Smirnov just losing it. Well, if he did that in the National Hockey League, that would be at least a 40-game suspension. Great defensive play by McGill, and then he gives him the extra shove. And Lamakin went crashing into the boards. Well, the Blackhawks have dominated this entire 60-minute game with hits like this. And this is one of the more aggressive hits by McGill. But most of the hits have been clean, solid hits. That could maybe have been a roughing penalty, but it's been all Chicago. Alexander Smirnov. Two minutes for unsportsmanlike conduct. A 10-minute misconduct and a game misconduct at the 18-minute mark. The Russian hierarchy will look too highly on that. We oh. might never hear a Smirnov ever again. Except in your glass. <laughs> we might not even see that anymore. <laughs> they might take it off the whole <laughs> continent. <laughs> and the USA chant begins again from just over 16,000 here in Chicago. Along the boards, they battle away. Ten seconds remaining. Cleared down. Manson takes a poke at shooting off. Let's don't get carried away here with the game over. At 19.55. Now Zanarok bumping into referee Marowelli on his way to the bench. The final score tonight in Chicago Stadium, Chicago 4, Dinamo Riga 1.